All right, behind the scenes vlog time. I was actually getting ready to start building this mini ITX PC that I have, and I wanted to do a video about whether or not this contact frame from Thermal Grizzly was a waste of money or not when I paired it with this Noctua cooler. And what I just found out when I tried to install Windows on the boot drive is that this cooler does not seem to be compatible with this motherboard. Problem is this motherboard has a heat sink that protrudes out just ever so slightly to cool the VRMs on this side. But because this is a full square block, it just sits on top. So I'm not actually able to mount this cooler to the MSI MPG Z890i Edge Ti Wi-Fi. That's such a long name. I was really excited to get started on this project, but now uh, it's delayed a little bit. I'm gonna have to find another cooler that doesn't get obstructed by this VRM heatsink. Kind of sucks, things are delayed just a little bit, but it is what it is. So I'm back with a new cooler. This is called the IS40X V3. It's a 45 millimeter low profile cooler from ID Cooling. Never heard of this brand, but there weren't that many options for CPU coolers in the height restriction for this mini ITX build that I could see. I've already gone ahead and done some testing with this cooler attached. I ran Cinebench R23, did Puget Bench in Photoshop, Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, got some baseline scores, and all with the default ILM built in because I wanted to see right off the bat if this Thermal Grizzly CPU contact frame makes any difference. Simply because I'm putting this into a fractal Terra case, there is not all that much room. I'm very limited by the size of the heatsink that is going to go in this build. So I wanna give it the best chance that it can have. I just don't know if this is a good pairing to do. Now for me to install the CPU contact frame, I need to go ahead and remove this built-in mechanism. I have to be very careful here because I don't wanna damage the pins on the CPU. Just gonna relieve this tension, which I probably should have done in the beginning. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the CPU out without damaging it. I've never removed this locking mechanism before, so I'm actually kind of surprised it comes in two parts. To install this, you have to install the CPU in first, and then you place the contact frame over it, and then you reuse the original four screws. That does feel quite snug on there. I don't know if that is the correct proper amount. And tighten, I like to go diagonal. Let's go ahead, plug everything back in. What I'm worried about is because this GPU is so heavy, it's just leaning over ever so slightly and I don't have anything heavy enough to prop this thing up. Now that I have the CPU contact frame installed, I don't think the temps are going to improve drastically because it was already thermal throttling at 105C. I've done all the testing with the contact frame now installed and surprisingly, there is actually an improvement when it comes to the Cinebench scores and the Puget Bench scores, all except for Photoshop. I don't know what happened, but initially when I did the no contact frame test, I didn't have the GPU installed got around 7,700 points, installed the GPU, ran the Photoshop test again, got over 11,000 points. But with the new contact frame, I don't think I've done anything different with the GPU. I was only getting 8,000 something points. So I really don't know what happened with the Photoshop benchmark. I don't know how I got 4,000 more points before I installed the contact frame after I plugged in the GPU. As far as I can tell, the contact frame is doing something to help transfer the heat because I'm getting better benchmarking scores with the exception of the Photoshop one. So it's not a complete waste of money to pair this contact frame with even this small of a heat sink, which I really thought it wasn't going to do anything. All the testing is done out of the way. I could take this apart and finally start putting this into the Fractal Terra case. Hold this tab. Okay. 
So with the 4080 Founders Edition, I thought I needed to set this at max at seven for the entire height of the GPU, but it seems like it clears with the setting five. Since it's so densely packed on this mini ITX board, there's not a lot of room for a lot of the connections like SATA or USB-C. Yeah, so this is the expander card. It just slots right into what looks like a mini RAM slot right here. I may not have the finger dexterity to install these power connectors. All right, all right, getting close, getting close. This is actually not taking as much time as I thought. This Type-C connector might actually be a problem. I think I know the GPU side will fit, but now <laughs> the motherboard side. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, it's just protruding out. <laughs> it doesn't close all the way. No. So the problem right now is the Type-C cable connector for the front panel. It's just a little bit too tall for this expander card. So I can't close this side panel all the way. All right, let's see if I can remove this. There we go. That's powered on, let's see if it works. This PC is now complete, you would think, but right now I've run into a problem where the PC is not detecting the GPU when it's in this state. When I was doing all my testing, when I was plugging the GPU straight into the motherboard, everything was detected properly, didn't have any issues. But right now, once everything's been assembled together, I'm not getting a display out through the GPU. So I'm gonna plug in this display port into the 4080. You'll notice that the screen has powered on a bit, but then it'll quickly say no display detect. See, no signal. Now with the HDMI connected to the monitor to the integrated graphics, instantly screen powered on. I pull up device manager under display adapters. It's only showing the Intel graphics. And another reason why I know the GPU is not being detected properly is because this GPU has like a zero RPM fan mode. If it's not under load, if it doesn't need to spin the fans on, this will actually come to a stop like this. So far I've reseated the GPU twice and it would work for a little bit, but then once it powered down or I don't know, after some time has passed, it would just not work again. I reseated it last night again, played a couple games of TFT and ARAM. One minute into TFT last night, the computer crashed, it froze, the image on both displays became like really saturated and some had some image glitches to it and then it finally crashed and rebooted. It rebooted normally, I would go and finish my game of TFT and even an ARAM. Went to sleep, woke up, powered it on again this morning and didn't move it at all and the GPU is not being detected again. My suspicion right now is the riser cable in this case has some sort of issue. Right now to diagnose this issue, I'm going to take the PC completely apart. I'm gonna take the graphics card out and the motherboard and plug the graphics card straight into the motherboard. If after I take everything apart, plug the GPU into the motherboard and it functions normally, like how it did before I put everything into the case, then we know it's an issue with the riser cable, then I'll have to reach out to Fractal Design and see what they can do or if they have any troubleshooting steps. Now, let's go ahead, undo everything. So just to show you, everything's disassembled. GPU is connected to the monitor right now via DisplayPort. One display out to no integrated graphics, all the way to the monitor here. Go into Device Manager. If you look under Display Adapters, this is what I was talking about earlier. You have Intel graphics and the GeForce RTX 4080. That'll appear both under Display Adapters. GPU is fine, motherboard is fine. Thankfully, it's not an issue with the 4080 that I have because I don't even know if I can get it replaced at this point. I'm gonna reach out to Fractal. This should still be under warranty or they should be able to replace this because when I searched online, 
There were a couple other people that were running into the same issue. Not a whole lot, but it was enough like, I saw maybe three or four people talk about it on Reddit and some forums. I did try some of the suggestions that people had left, such as changing the PCIe generation from like five or automatic to five to four, all the way down to one. That didn't resolve the issue. Kind of disappointing that I'm not able to be done with this PC build and just use it as intended. Now I have to go and contact Fractal support wait for the replacement and still be stuck in this weird limbo of not having a desktop to use. Generally speaking, I would like to just use my desktop when I'm at home and not have to use my work laptop. I could use this desktop in this really weird configuration and edit this video. I might just do that and see how it, how it performs, see if there's any issues. Uh, with the GPU itself since all I've done was synthetic benchmarking. Not quite the ending that I was expecting to have for this video, but I just wanna put this out there and move on and not just sit on this because the longer I sit on video or footage, the more likely I'm gonna forget about it and not want to return to it. So hopefully the next time I make a video, this will be done. And then I'll probably do a video on fixing this wall mount PC. There's an issue with the graphics card where I think the pump died. That's gonna be it for this video on this PC build and then unbuild. Um, if you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you left a like or if you subscribed and I'll see you in the next video.